Okay, question 10, part B. The diagram shows the vertices of a square K, L, M, N touching the sides of the same hexagon as we had before, A, B, C, D, E, F, uh, with K, N parallel to F, B. Okay, so again, this, this side is parallel to that side. Okay, um, use your results from part A1 and A3 to find the length of a side of the square. So we've got to find the length of the side of the square. Okay, I'm going to call it L. We've used X, we've used Y, we've used Z. I'm going to call it L. All right, so now if we go back to the previous question, which I've drawn down here. Okay, maybe I should have put this a bit higher. Can I do that now? these bits with it. So if I move anything behind. So I can see things clearly together. Okay. So okay, good. Now, if I look at these two together, this is the answer to part um, A, two and three, and this is the answer to part um, B. Okay. Um, I want to find the length of this this uh, square. I need to find the length of the square. Now, I know that um, this length from A to F is, this length from A to F is, X is 10. Okay. And now, A to K is a new length. Let's just call it M. Okay. This is going to be 10 minus n. Okay? Now I know the relationship between L and this length here. Okay? From here, this is 20 minus x, this is 10 minus x. So L here must be 20 minus m. Okay? That's using the answer to a part 3. And I also know if this is m, then this is also going to be m. And this is going to be, as we learnt here, it's going to be this root 3 times m. Over here, it was x times root 3, okay? And over here, it's going to be m times root. You'll have exactly the same situation. That's 120, that's 60, that's 90, that's 30. It's going to be isosceles triangle. The only difference now is this, both sides are m, so this is going to be m times root 3. You don't have to go calculating all over again. So you use your answers from the previous questions. Now, the different thing about this situation is we're told that this is now a square, okay? If this is a square, then I know that these two sides are the same. So I can make an equation out of it. So I can say 20 minus m is equal to m times root 3. Okay? Now, I can keep it exact values and then do some factorizing. Or I can make life a bit simpler. I can just use the value of root 3, which we learnt earlier. The, the, the value of root 3, we wrote down our answer as... So the square root of 3 is 1.732. So I can write this as 20 minus m equals 1.732 times m. Okay, I've written it to one more significant figure than I need for my final answer. So I can say that 20 is equal to 1.732m plus m, bringing the m's to one side. So I can now say... Uh, 2.732m is equal to 20, so I can now say m is going to be 20 divided by 2.732, okay, which should give us our answer. So 20, where are we? There we are. So we have 20 divided by 2.732. 732, and that gives us an answer, which is 
centimeters. We have seven, seven point three two centimeters. So that is the length of uh, that's a, that's the size of um, M. Okay. Now that's not our final answer because that's what M is. M is not the side of the square. Okay. M is not the side of the square. M is this length here. Okay, so we want to find the side of the square, don't we? The side of the square is this, which is 20 minus m. Yes? So what we want to find is the side of the square. So it's going to be 20 minus this answer. 7.3. No, uh, 1 point. What's the answer again? Where was it? Sorry, let's get my, let's get my calculator answer. 7.320, yeah, 7.3206, 20 minus 7.32, 3206. So I didn't, I shouldn't have written this as three, three significant figures because it was not my final answer. Yes. This thing is a bit funny. Okay, so we have m equals 20 minus 7. Point, so first of all, m is equal to 7.32. 0, 06. So L is equal to 20 minus that. So I got my calculator answer 20 minus answer. 20 minus my answer gives me the answer which is 12.7. 12.679, which gives me 12.7 if I round it to 3 SF. So I end up with 12.7 centimeters. There's our final answer. And we're done. Okay, so that's that.